you talk? Yeah, I... Can I talk? I'm the talkingest man that ever lived. together it's the jacket off podcast episode 52 the new 52 starts today keep it on brand keep it on point no screaming no yelling no ranting no raving today is just just me and you we're gonna keep it easy breezy beautiful cover girl maybe i'm born with it maybe it's maybelline just do it just do it it's May 11th. What a time to be alive. We passed Cinco de Mayo. Everybody made it out alive. I'm drinking a Moscow Mule right now. Is this is this your beat poetry session? What the hell is happening right now? <laughs> and then I went to the store. Yeah. I'm a I'm a beatnik. Okay. Well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we didn't have what we had last, I mean, it's kind of like stripping away the best components of it, right? The only problem is, is that when you have a show like we had last week, the the don't watch the the don't listen to this podcast. And then you want to get back on, you want to get back on track. You kind of, I feel like I kind of want to rant again, but you know what it is? It's that's like, all you do, Brent. So you ran away. well, I what know, but about this? well, the... that's the problem, Dylan, is that I don't really think I have that much. It's kind of like when it it's kind of like for you clean week. I would think so. I, but I think it's also, it's like when. A rock band or a or a singer songwriter writes about what like write, writes about something and then that particular topic makes them famous. And then all of a sudden and, and especially if that topic is uh, being poor. So if Green Day wrote the entire album of Dookie about being a poor broke ass teenager wanking himself off constantly and being bored and shit and then they make the two subsequent records that grossed i mean that record when it came out sold like a kajillion fucking copies and now suddenly they're the biggest rock stars in the world now what are you gonna write your music about i thought you were throwing shade at blink 182 right there <laughs> I could, and that goes for the same thing. Mark Hoppus. Let's see. What's the first catalog of songs with Mark Hoppus? So we got, we're at Cheshire Cat and Dude Ranch, the early stuff. It's all fast-paced, angry, punk rock about skateboarding and chicks and fucking all that stuff, right? It's like, you know, the high mythos school. that's like, yeah, high school shit, Yum. like problems Yum. being Yum. a young pimply, yeah, young, dumb, and full of cum. <laughs> so that's that's Mark's point of view, right? And actually, at the time, it's Tom's point of view, too, and Travis's point of view. Well, Travis so here we are at that time. Oh, well, yeah, they had how how Mark, Tom, and Travis show was no, Enema of the State. Enema of the State was the first yeah, one. So at, right after Dude Ranch. It was Scott. Ooh. Scott Rayner was right up to do ranch, and then that's Travis right from there. So, all three of these guys, high school kids, fucking around, getting in trouble, getting kicked out, of high being school. little shitheads, getting kicked out. Fucking, you know, we've set the stage right, and then suddenly, we ramp up. We we head into the Mark Tom and Travis like. Enema of the State, Mark Tom Travis show. Now we're like, oh my God, this is going to be the biggest band of all time. 
And then, but this is the difference. They're still writing about that stuff. But, and for some reason, the general public doesn't find it disingenuous in the least. They still have all the stories. Oh, they're still young at that time. Yeah, they are very, that's the other thing that I think a lot of people tend to forget about, like, anything like pop punk bands or punk bands or even rock bands. Like you look at fucking like 80, you look at eighties hair metal bands and you think that all those guys are like fucking like 30 and they're all heroin adults. It's like Mickey six was in Motley Crue and he was like 19, 18 or 19 years old. When they said Mick Mars came into it and he was old, he was like 25, 26. Like that, that was the degree to how old he was compared to the rest of them. I'm pretty sure Mark is the oldest of the three. Um, but what I was trying to say, Dylan, was that eventually what happens is if the guy that made like a, a good example of this is like Lewis Black. If Lewis Black, the guy who made his career on being an angry old curmudgeon fuck, suddenly has billions of dollars in his fucking pocket. And now he don't got shit to prove to anybody. And what could he possibly be angry about? Now he's got to start coming up with stuff. It's like Pearl Jam. Eddie Vedder was a young, angry, impressionable, fucking weird dude. And then now he's a multi-bajillionaire rock star. But you still got to keep up the ethos. And that's what I have to do, Dylan. I have to keep coming up with things to get angry about. It's hard. What do you do? You know, when you're je- like when you have a week that's generally generally just blah, whatever. You got to come up with shit to be uh, unhappy about. I don't know you what don't it have is. To. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, but then but but then where then where do we derive entertainment value out of anything? Then what's Here fun? Goes. Here Dude, it goes. <laughs> What's fun? Hey, what's funny about being happy? I don't know, Dylan. That's the question, isn't it? You can make it funny. I think that's the. Ah, it's like art or anything else, actually. It's like when they always say that, like John Coltrane got shitty when he st- when he got off the drugs. It's like I get it. Generally, we have more to write about. We have more to editorialize when we're angry about something than we are when we're happy about something. I don't think many people want to hear like, oh, gee, I'm in a good marriage and the weather's really nice. And I had a relatively uneventful week at work. Whoa, see, I'm here all week. But they do want to hear fucking shit that they can relate to, which is their own anger. That's what they want to hear, Dylan. That's what the people want. They want to hear about their boss through my boss and my experiences with my boss. They want to be like, yeah. That does suck. I have to travel too a lot. Fuck your boss. Fuck him. <laughs> uh yeah, I got to get on I got to travel a lot too. I I can relate to it. I get delayed all the time cuz I have horrible luck. I can relate to that. Well, Dylan, this week like I said, it is what it is. You know, and to be honest with you, I think a lot of times what I do with this is I just bury stuff. I just go through the week and little like it depends on the week, depends on how much I hold on to. That's what it is. It's like pretty much every week has shit in it that's ripe for the like I said the editor edit edit editorial is that a word Ed- editorialization yeah of this like but sometimes. It's just how much do I really hold on to? How much do I put in my little bag throughout the week of just like, just wait until fucking the weekend to where I can just pile all this shit on and just yell it at Dylan for people's amusement. A fucking bag of tomato cans to make sauce and it explodes on my walk into the house. That's how you're just filling that bag with tomato cans ready to explode. That's a weird comment, but sure. What you, you ever um, get like the cans of to, like tomatoes that you make spaghetti sauce with? Yeah, and you know how they always put them in one bag, and that's always the bag that rips 
as you're carrying the groceries from the car to the house. Okay. You are now that I, bag. Just filling I, the bag, that mm, plastic bag with tomato cans. I get you now. Totally, totally valid metaphor. And I and I will I I'll agree I with you on it. I had to explain it. Let me get out the fucking map so I can draw you a... a, 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 a Let's see. Where's Moron? Moron's right here. Right here. We're and then here's you. To... Here's the metaphor I'm trying to get you to understand. It's a pretty long drive between both of those two points. So I'm going to need to get some gas. <laughs> You're paying for uh, the gas because I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dylan, that reminds me. Gas. Uh, see, I knew I would find something. I knew I'd find something that I could tell you. Check engine lights on. Take that, every person in America. I can relate to you. I can, I could, and and I could say my check engine lights on, and you could be like, yeah, my check engine lights on too. I drive a piece of shit. Hey, my check engine lights on too. But I know what's wrong with mine, and it's not check a big engine problem. club. Well, it's going to be a big problem once you get it inspected. Then you're going to have to bring it to one of those fucking schlocky fucking garages do where they'll be like, don't my, worry. Do you know who Just my me. certified inspector is? I know who your certified inspector is, Dylan. Also, I, you I, don't have to. Also, I just got it inspected because the check engine light goes on and off because of the problem with it. Oh, you pulled and the we, old Verona special, Dylan. And, so we caught, you drove well, around till that bitch turned off, and you're Justin. Justin! <laughs> no, not it's not even that. I had the piece that we needed to replace. I bought the piece, right? Yep. And the piece. when we were we were going, I was driving down to to go get the piece put in, and the check engine light turned off. So I'm like, Justin, the check engine light's off. And yeah! He's like, he's like, all right, fuck it. We won't put the piece in. We'll just run that bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. It, you know, it reminds me so much of when I used to drive the Blazer. Where my mom knew a bunch of sketchy fucking mechanics all over the place. Where she'd be like, right when your check engine light fucking turns off call me and then i'll tell you where to go and then i would go to like this guy's house that's got a garage attached to it with a that computer. somehow yeah, had the, with a computer, computer on it and it's just like fucking scan that shit with some greasy ass hand scanner plug the thing into the into the computer and then it's just whoop here you go i'll print out your your registration or your uh your inspection sticker and then you just slap that bitch on and it's good until it falls apart Incidentally, that vehicle never fell apart. There's a guy still driving it at the trailer park. Oh so. my god! Well, I don't know if he's still driving it. Thousand miles on it. I know for sure that three to four years ago, at the latest, it was still in operation when my mom moved out of the trailer park. That's what I know for sure because I went down there to help move and shit yeah and i i watched that car fucking drive by so at that point i you had that in high school right oh yeah i had that that in high school my mom had already put yeah oh wait my well yeah that's my mom had it my mom had it from my mom had it from Oh, four to oh eight. I think she had it for like four years before that. And I was driving it with 90,000 miles on it. 85 or 90, which wasn't bad. My mom got my mom ended up getting a car. I think it had like 40, 50,000 miles on it, which for her at the time was like the least amount of mileage she'd ever had on a vehicle. Mm-hmm. And then I think that was the I think that was a she got a blazer, too. No, you, had, you both had blazers at one point. We did. She got a big, bigger one, and then she ended up going and selling that, and then buying a, uh, uh, uh an Impala. Not an Impala. What the fuck is that? Yeah, maybe it was an Impala. They made one that was like a Dale Junior edition. Oh, My the, mom had the like SS the Intimidate, the whatever it is. She had like that version of it, but I think it was silver. It wasn't red because the red and black are though both of those. Mm-hmm. But this one was like that version, but silver. She drove that for a little while, 
and then bef- and then it what now she drives a an Altima just like you drive only it's the regular not the hybrid. Anyway, it kind of harkens me back to the times of where you just got when your I car. Was, Why? How is the check engine light on? I don't know. So the first thing was I, my check engine light. I only have twenty eight thousand miles on this car. By the way, it's fucking like spotless. And I was driving around. I, this was the first time my check engine comes on. Check engine comes on. I go and do the reader at the advance auto. I figure out the problem. I'm like, okay, it you know, has something to do with my exhaust or whatever. So I bring it in. Oh. I write in the description of what like the, the, the reader came up with at advance auto and the, I do it all online and shit to schedule my appointment. I go in, they call me. They're like, Oh, okay. We figured it out. It's your emissions flap somewhere in my, like in, in your gas line, there's an emission flap. We fixed it. It's covered under your warranty. Zero dollars. You're all set. better be. Well, I bought the look. I had the option of not purchasing this warranty, and I'm glad that I did. I just wouldn't figure that I would have had to fucking take advantage of this shit so goddamn early. It's unbelievable. Six weeks after you bought the car. Yeah, fucking A. So then I take the car, and then I drive it for another week, and then the check engine light fucking comes on again. So now I call them, and they're like, well, we can't get you in until next Thursday, which would be this coming Thursday. So now I'm driving around with a check engine light again and I got to go. I'm I'm going to my grandparents this weekend, this coming weekend. So on Thursday would have been the day that I would have left like that night. Mm-hmm. So now it's going to be like in the morning, I'm going to bring that shit and then hopefully they're going to fix it by the time I got to travel with it. So it's like it's just frustrating because, you know, I buy I buy a Kia Soul with that many miles on it or less and drive that shit and it gave me like no problems and then trade it in to get something that for me kind of symbolized more of a passion play than a Mr. Practical type of fucking approach. Yeah, and PSO then what I was a Mr. Practical oh, approach. <laughs> yeah. There's Mr. Pra- more practical than a Kia Soul. <laughs> nothing. And like, look, it served me well countless fucking times, many, many occasions. But then I get this. I got the most fun fucking driving this car. It's got heated seats, fucking everything fully loaded, sunroof, goddamn everything. And it's a Volkswagen. They're supposed and to be. And it's a Volkswagen. So it's going to be German engineering, baby. 26,000 miles on it. And then check engine light comes on. Cool. But Dylan, that's what the warranty's for. Get her to 100,000 miles and fucking milk that shit for all it's worth. It's like health insurance coverage. It's like. You, I pay for that shit, so I'm gonna go to the doctors a hundred times to figure out what the fuck is going on. I'm go- I don't care what it is. I got a pimple on my face. Give me a fucking MRI. Give me a goddamn. Put me in me, that machine. Put me in hey, all of them. Hook me up to fucking everything. Do? What is it? What's it? What does it tell you? If can it you does, put, it do. Can you put <laughs> me in it, or can I put? Can I put me in? You know, can I put me in? What it? body what parts saying? can I? What body parts can I put in that thing? Show me all the bits and bobs that I can do. Give me all the blood tests. Take out all of my blood, run it through the system, and tell me what's going on. Give me the 20 fucking eight in me. Give me the goddamn all of that shit. Give it to me. I wanted to. And actually, I'm thinking about doing that. Stick your finger up my butt, too, while you're over. Yep. Get, get in there. Is there anything going on here? We're looking at preemptive medicine. I know you got preventative take a right, medicine, but w- if you, would you take a left for me too? Just make sure there's nothing going on in that direction. Explore every avenue. Don't l- leave no stone unturned, including kidney stones. Leave nothing to the imagination. Also, I don't know if I got any of those, but hit me some with some sound waves just in case. Scoop out my brain, put it on the table, and just. You know, what What do you do with it? Poke it, fucking put some electrodes on it, make it jiggle, put, weigh it. I don't fucking care what you do. Figure out what's going on in my head. That'd be good. If maybe there was some sort of, like, with the mo- with the advancements of modern medicine, if you go into your doctor and you're like, uh, I can't sleep. I fucking, I got bad anxiety. 
depression's a bitch. And then they're just like, I don't know what to do for you. Maybe eat some more oranges. Maybe that's the best way. More vitamins. To, I don't know what it's, what is, I'm just a doctor. I don't know shit about this. They're like, go into your general practitioner to get mental health evaluation. General practitioner, a bitch, that's a glorified nurse's assistant. You go in there and they'll be like, oh, man, sometimes you feel sad about stuff. You get fucking, get in line. I was tired this morning too, bitch. Get out of my office. And then you're like, okay. And then you walk out and sustain another fucking three weeks of shit sleep and intrusive thoughts and fucking insanity. And then you just, all right, I guess this is just my life now. (laughs) It's so relatable, Dylan. How could anybody not relate to that? They're tired in the morning. People are driving to work and not wanting, not, not knowing how they got there every day. They're doing it. I know. I'm every man. I'm the every man, Dylan. I'm every man. Look at him. Look at him go. I'm every man. I'm going to work every day. I'm not passionate about my job. I fucking come home and I don't have any motivation to do any of my hobbies. What? What? What was that? Huh? But sometimes you just put a flame underneath your hand to see if you feel. Sure. (laughs) Death, you are my bitch lover. Sometimes your hand's covered in gasoline. I spilled this good. lighter right now. Mm. That's all I need. I uh I feel like I'm on a con like I'll back up a little bit. I got myself doing some primo grade A shit. Here it is. There it is. Primo grade A, just like that. That's the symbol for it. Primo grade was, A shit. I thought that was like white supremacist stuff now. Could be. I am really white and <laughs> you know, there's there's always that possibility. They're but, co-opting everything at this point. You can't mm-hmm. absolutely. Soon it's gonna be like all of every Ed Hardy tattoo is gonna be a white supremacist symbol. It's like, oh god, no. <laughs> I have this big tapestry and everything. <laughs> what I was saying is that. Last week, I acquired some grade A shit. Dylan, grade A, grade A cartridges, cartridges, and it ain't Sonic, it ain't GoldenEye 007, Dylan. It ain't, it ain't fucking Sega Master System. Okay, it ain't an it's some inkjet cartridge. It's it ain't no inkjet cartridge. This shit's refillable, but it ain't. Uh, it's a little bit more. It's actually. If you really, if I really think about it, it probably is less expensive than a printer printer ink cartridge in today's prices. That's crack prices. <laughs> <laughs> printer ink cartridges pretty much are the most marked up fucking piece well, of equipment especially on the Especially they're for like an inkjet. Do you ever see those things? Or like it's oh, like the fucking price of <laughs> like the price of fucking heroin. <laughs> or or more expensive. Those cartridges are the size of small Small printers, laser jet. That's what it is. Not ink, ink just small printers. So these cartridges, Dylan. They the these cartridges when you load them into the system, they 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 they, they make your life that is normally sixteen bit. They bring it right up to sixty four bit. Oh, they bring so it right up to Nintendo sixty four. Saying yeah, exactly, exactly. You, gotcha. I'm from You're 8-bit speak. all the way up to 32X with these cartridges. And so with these cartridges, I felt like, you know, I don't need a game shark. I don't need no cheat codes. I'm just going to I'm gonna get right into it. I'm going to have a grand old time. And here's what these cartridges, Dylan, tell me about myself. They, they tell me that I, probably I'm a deeply flawed individual. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Uh, <laughs> you said it you comes were the from, everyman. <laughs> I am the everyman, and I can tell you why. In addition to the to my completely normal everyday life problems that every person has, uh, I'm relatable in the everyman because when I when I turn the cartridges on, when I when I when I use these cartridges, Dylan, they 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 let me know things. 
they let me know that like they tell you if secrets. i don't use the cartridges if i don't blow into the cartridge every once in a while dylan the game isn't gonna work the game's gonna be really glitchy it's not gonna allow me to advance past a certain number of levels that's probably why last week it probably felt like maybe maybe my i i didn't have enough xp on my character if you get my meaning we're talking about uh weed here in case <laughs> <laughs> in case in... whatever <laughs> Was just trying to remain coy and fascinating and use a lot of simile and I'm metaphor. I'm just yes, the Dylan, listeners. look, last week. I'm just letting the listeners know. It's just... Last week, I went on a fucking magical mystery tour because I'm very unfamiliar with vaping THC, Dylan. It's hard and it's very disarming. And what it tells me about Wait, myself. Why is it hard? Because. Is it like hard to get? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. It, it's hard to measure. Like, oh, it's hard to oh. like. It's hard to like. Oh, you think you're, like you think how many settings does this thing have? <laughs> right. It's like how many settings does this have? And I don't know what one to set it to. And then you set it, and then you, and you forget get, it. <laughs> you set it, and forget it. You, not forget it forget you for at least the next four hours because you are just no 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 um <laughs> yeah the movement like... trail behind you is fucking the six million dollar man over here <laughs> um that was like that was the first that this is what we call the the experimental phase the get getting to know your product so I got to know the product and then I was like, okay, this ain't so this ain't nothing to fuck around with. So you just dial it back a little bit and then you can sort of regulate your, your senses. But here's the thing. This is again what I realize is that Brent on the don't listen to this episode and Brent now are two of the same two sides of the same coin. It's just that what flips the coin usually what flips the coin is it, what 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 some, you just give it the, a little flick and it'll, you fl just it'll give flip. it a little flick and then i'm on the other side i'm on the lucky side of the coin and i think what it comes down to is sometimes i have to just kill my ego i have to kill my whatever causes that whatever any of that is I just got to think it's in the hippocampus. It's somewhere, somewhere in there. this general region up in the pituitary. I just have to switch that off. And then for a for a good solid period of time, I can just I feel like I have I I'm a person that it feels like all the time I'm just battling how much dopamine, serotonin I have <laughs> like that the last little bits and flutters of like all that stuff I have in my system. And it feels like the, the only way to regulate it is to know how to like the same stuff that gives you the, Oh yeah. I'm on top of the roller coaster or yeah. I just fucking took a Molly and went and saw a marshmallow or the thing where it's like, oh, I'm in love or the thing where it's like, man, it's a really nice day out. Good thing I don't got to work tomorrow. Those are all <laughs> the same things. They're all the same machination. And it all comes down to that shining thing. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. The play part of it is what gives you the old, that the gives you that nice little that equilibrium we're all we're all talking about that's what it feels like feels like sometimes i like i'm like i'm like a big fucking like stock market brent the brent stock market it's like sometimes i know when to buy and sometimes i know when to sell <laughs> the brent dropped 20 points today oh god god help us all i don't want to listen to the next podcast if the fucking brent dropped 30 <laughs> 20 or 30 points that's what it is, Dylan, is that my stock was significantly lower on don't listen to this episode than now. 
I would encourage people to listen to this episode. This is a good one, maybe. I don't know. Is How it? many minutes are we in? I, a half an look. hour. Okay. Look, see? Half an hour. That's pretty good. We're doing pretty good for an unstructured event. You know what I'm saying? It's just, just off the cuff. Eat some fucking cheds. Not a sponsor. Although I wish they were, man. They're fucking... Do not put that in your mouth. Oh my god. Mm. Everybody at home, go buy some cheds. They got them at the, up at the Hannaford. Mm. It's good. It's cheese. It's all cheese. It's all it is. I should be the it should be the slogan on the front of this package. It's all cheese. All cheese. All cheese. It's, it's all, all it is. is. It's all it is, baby. <sighs> I won't talk about art doing this week. I won't talk about I won't talk about any other things that make me mad. You know what you, you need you need It's one, happy time. You need one good event to kick off your summer. I need one good event to kick off the summer? Yeah. Tell me what it is. Oh, I don't know. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm well, just, I'm just saying you need that one that one event. I agree with like, you. Like summer's here. Uh, let's Look, here's the thing. This this in many ways is like what you know if if you if you could bet on me if you could bet on the stock market right bet on bet on uh the Brent Pickard Industrial yeah, Average we are buying right now because it is low buy low You're, sell high buy 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 you keep buying you keep buying you keep buying and then the first concert of the summer you sell. Day after, Indy five. That's where you sell. fucking sell. Boom! Keep selling, keep selling, keep selling, keep selling, and then about a week in, after that show, start buying again. That's how it happens. Maybe two weeks. Maybe two. I could probably ride the high of a real good experience as far as again, like if the if the analysts up on up down on Wall Street, like for for Brent stock market, are taking a look at it. They are looking at the trends. They're saying, all right, seasons past, we're talking trends. Trends dictate that Brent oftentimes will be able to ride out, especially if it's a real hot event. Brent can ride that out two weeks, solid, super productive. Neurons are firing. But then, but then also what we're talking about too is the season. What season are we in? Because the season shortens that window yeah. drastically. And you got you got to be careful because there could be pop up events that keep that that price high. And if you sell, yeah, I could you plateau. Sell, if you sell, then you're not going to be able to buy back. Most of the time, what I do is, I'll I'll end up in a scenario where like, okay, I'll give you I'll give you for instance, it's like okay, winter time. All right, we're already looking at the lo- the bottom price up. averages. We're it's bottom a penny at stock. That. So we're, right, we're These at the penny, penny stock stocks. level in the winter. But here's where like it starts to get interesting. There was one week during the winter where I could have bought, I could have held majority stake in Brent. Uh, oh, enterprises 100%. for about two fifty. If I was a publicly traded company, <laughs> if I was an IPO and not private, about two fifty could have got me about. majority stakeholder. So I'd be then, the CEO at this point, <laughs> you buy, 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 buy. But that's winter. like insider trading, though, because I was getting the text messages. I would t- right. You don't so want to have that type get, of information. I don't get Martha Stewarted over here. Right. You don't want to go to trading. jail for betting on fucking Brent stocks. So, <laughs> you you're in winter. You bought a bunch of stocks. You're like, all right, life is good. So then wait for that windfall. So the windfall is going to be when you know, when you get some information that, wow, there might be a show at the Westcott. Okay, cool. That seems uh, to be the only venue that's active. Yeah, but here's yeah. the thing. Oh, okay. you're saying you, during the winter. During the winter, that's what I'm saying. So during winter, it's like, oh, somebody somebody told Brent that there's a, there's a show at the Westcott. Everybody's coming out. It's going to be all the boys, and then all of a sudden you see that the ticker starts to go, and then you're like, "Uh uh-oh, and then Jim Cramer comes on, and he's like, all right, so now here's the thing. 
I just I, I I can't help but notice that last week Brent was a penny stock, but now I think he's gonna be my buy of the week. He hits a big fucking red button and fucking confetti goes everywhere and a siren goes off, and then you're watching CNBC and you're like, hmm. no. This I gotta. I'm think I'm gonna wait. Yeah. This is, I think this, just wait. Just yeah, wait and just see. Wait. And then, then comes. Somehow, I think we just got some word. Some, some, a little birdie told me that Brent has gotten an opportunity to get on the decks in a couple weeks after this. He's he's DJing a party. It's a Christmas party. Everybody's there. I know. Everybody's having a good time. Parties. And then you're like, boy. I think I should probably, this is probably where I should start selling right here. So you get you the week of the, the week of this thing, Brent's online. He's buying a bunch of extra shit. He doesn't need lights for the, the thing light situation. He's fucking buying. Like he's going, you see if you're monitoring his web traffic, the three most visited websites are musicians, friend, fucking Chave.com and then and eBay. Fucking eBay. All of these three websites in in sequence, and the top three listed products are Fog Jets, Cryo Jets, and fucking lasers. T-shirt cannons. Oh, lasers. And, oh, well, lasers or well, you don't have motorized a... lights. <laughs> yeah, and great. DMX cables. DMX cable, DMX controllers. DMX controllers. Yeah, all of these things. Right. So then you know, like, oh God. It's the, it, He's you know, it's happening up. again. He's ramping up to whatever this is. So we'll just keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the price. And then suddenly when we get to the day of, the stock drops. It fucking drops because now I got to do stuff, right? <laughs> now it's like, oh, God, I have to load in a bunch of speakers and get everything set up. And this part doesn't work. And this sounds like shit. And then, but that, so this is where now you're up to the minute. You're on the trading floor. Yeah. You're looking at the screen and you're like, oh my God, about please. About to close for just, the day. About to close for the day. We're almost closing. The The closing bell is about to happen. And then suddenly I start. Everything works. The lights work. The fucking music works. My microphone works. And then people start dancing to that first song that I'm really Pony. fucking, that I was, re that uh, Pony is where it starts. And so we're like, nah, 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 well, nah, you nah, know nah. if it starts at Pony, <laughs> you well not not where I start. It's where well, they like where they yeah, have started. Yeah, you're right, you're like right, I've right. played a bunch of shit before this that you sucks or whatever. Up. You warm them up. You warm them in, and then you get them to then you get to Pony, and then people start getting in trouble, and then that's where you start selling. So you sell, 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 sell until I get to where everybody clears the dance floor because I played something stupid. <laughs> but that's just a mini fluctuation. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. We're talking about, you know, long-term gains here. So just to stay the course, and then by the end, I'm extremely tired, feel great though, sleep next day, go to breakfast, still great. Stock is rising. Now we're going to plateau throughout the week. Because now... You know, I don't have anything to live for. You know, it's it's just playing the game, Dylan. It's that's all it is. It's just playing Brent's big old game of chasing the dragon. That's what it's all about. So yeah, that's your insider trading tip for this week. Stay tuned next week for more inform insider trading information from the Brent Stock Exchange. I will let you know in two weeks the stock will be at an all time high. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, Hopefully, if everything goes well, just keep an eye on it. Watch Jim Cramer just to make sure that he is thinking that I'm some sort of underdog or some shit like that. It's like, no, no, no. Don't buy Brent this week. Buy Dylan or whatever you're going to do. Never buy Dylan. <laughs> don't buy Dylan stock. That's, I mean, that's as, if you don't. thought Brent stock was volatile, you're going to look at Dylan stock and be like, is it always going to be like this? Is there any increase in it? <laughs> you the company filed for bankruptcy 15 times in the last 10 years. Come on, man. That's just, doing, that's just performing good business. That's what that is. <laughs> Keeping the business alive. Keeping the business alive. Keeping the dream alive, Dylan. 
So, <laughs> in the interest of keeping this podcast alive, I think we should. And I think now. we should <laughs> talk about. <laughs> I think we should talk about some some news, Dylan. We never do that. We never get on. We never discuss our our feelings about stuff, our our inclinations about nice news hour. We just did the fucking business tonight. Yeah, well, it's, that was the biz. That was the business section. But we wanna. We also want to talk about uh, you know other stuff. We want to talk about. Uh, you know, games that you played lately, that old that old chestnut, that old uh, segment. But I also want to just like, I want to talk about current events. Let's I want to see what's for me? going on in the world. I, it's, I'm really disconnected, so I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to probably look at some shit right now. Um, and I'm probably just going to like hit you with some, with some shit like A... A, it's t- topic A. Did you are you interested in going to see the De- De- Detective Pikachu? Yeah, I am. Okay, good stuff. But uh, I don't know. If I I don't want to go see it alone. It seems weird. <laughs> you know what? Nothing's weird, man. It's I weird. told. I went and saw Endgame by my lonesome and sat next to a kid and some other guy. I mean, I know Endgame is a little less weird than Detective Pikachu. I'll grant you that, no matter what. But you know. It, it, it's 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 objective, to say the least. I was very disappointed. Um, uh, my niece and nephew just came over and they come in the front door, and my nephew's got the Detective Pikachu card in his hand, and I'm like, "You went without me." Don't do this. <laughs> uh, come on. Now, now. Oh yeah. Also, they're giving away uh, like little booster packs, like. Like old school Pokemon style, where you got the Mew when you went to go see uh, the Pokemon in the movie. They, I think it has every pack has a Detective Pikachu and like one other uh, card in it, and all the art on the other cards are the uh, from the movie. Sick. So like the Mister Mime, the image is like the picture of the Mister Mime, yeah, whatever. Now. There, that was, that was my detective peak. Look, I got you. Got f- two minutes out of that. There you go, bro. dude. I'm I'm happy with it. I'm just hitting you with some rapid fire shit. All right. Here's our next thing. Fucking loot boxes. Oh. There's been a big to do about fucking introducing bills about loot boxes and microtransactions for players that are under a certain age. Are we saying that this is some sort of fucking I don't give a shit, whatever you want want to do type of scenario? Go. Tell me the tell me your thoughts. Shit. Okay. Next next, next. fucking thing. Next. Let's keep it moving. Let's go. All right. Hey, you wanna stop? Uh Kingdom Heartbeats. Okay. King, Kingdom Hearts Dance Remix album. Yeah. Coming out. Heard the face of my fears. You heard the face of my fears. Yes. Okay. I it's don't know good. what else is on the record. I, I forgot. I could look it up right now. But I don't think it's out yet. But the uh, oh, face of my fears came go. out. Okay. Off of it, and I think it was what DJ Cutman that did it. Mm-hmm. Oh no, Robo Rob. He's doing all of them. Oh, is it out? Robo Rob. Oh, it's all out now. It wasn't out when I. There's... I'm on the bleeding edge, Dylan. Okay. I'm on the bleeding edge. So yeah, you got. It's basically just some songs, from the from the game itself. So you got okay. si- you got simple and clean. You got face my fears, but then there's like. Mixes on the record, yeah. Like this is Halloween, uh, Traver- the Traverse Town theme, Sora's theme, the Thirteenth Show, Tra- yeah. Like other other music from the. Th- it's got the the main hits and then other. Okay. Other bops. I haven't listened to it all yet. Obviously, like I said, because I didn't even know it was all out yet. Just listen to fa- Face My Fears because that one came out like last week. They like as a 
what's the word I'm looking for? Like a teaser. The first single off the album. Okay. Okay. Uh, great take on that. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Reggie Phil Zaim has fucking left Nintendo. We say like goodbye last, to him. That was like last month, but okay. I know, I know, but he's all like he did a couple more things, and there was a little bit, there was some stuff that's coming out and whatnot uh, from him. Little, little, little press conferences and little speeches and shit like that that was coming out. Uh, Hasbro has made some Overwatch action figures. Yeah, I saw those. They're pretty cool looking. Um, the yeah, they're they're like they look like Hasbro. You know what I mean? But they're yeah. like a little bit more uh they're they're like a little better than what Hasbro would normally I like how there's like do Overwatch and Fortnite are the two like we can we can make toys out of this game games. It's like yep. Fortnite you have the they have the action figures and then they got the nerf guns. You could buy like a scar nerf gun yeah. and uh the the silenced the silenced pistol and it says shot it. Like the pistol they got the some bomb ass fucking merchandising on both of them shits. Like, wow, wow damn. And then Overwatch, so Bloodstain got oh. the Legos, which is really cool. They have Legos now. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can get a Lego Bastion, a Lego Diva. I think you could get Hanamura, like the map. I think that's the one set, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay, so we have. Watchpoint Gibraltar, Bastion, oh, right. Diva, and Reinhardt Dorado Showdown. That one's pretty cool because it's the the payload, the yeah. little truck, and all that shit. That's, and then you uh, got the Wild West one, right? Dorado Showdown. Yeah. yeah. And then Hanzo v Genji and Tracer v Widowmaker. Mm -hmm. Tracer's got the little hover, the spaceship, and uh, Tracer's got the her sniper rifle. And uh, Diva and Reinhardt seems to well, honestly, I'll probably tell you, Bastion seems to be the most appealing because he's the most Lego y yeah, and just, it looks like super badass. It's just like a little fig like one of the little figure ones too, which are really fun to put together. Uh so um that's pretty sick. Uh I'll tell you another thing that's pretty sick. My uh my dude uh uh Koji Igarashi yeah. is uh closer and closer to his bloodstained next ritual month, of the baby. night next month we're heading towards it we're getting there and uh the fucking trailer was weird as shit um i didn't even see like, it i know they showed like because they redid all the visuals on it they did they redid everything and some of it wasn't even just like upgrading the textures uh some of it was like oh cuz it was that where 2. they 5D stuff that people kind of don't like but i did not see the new trailer so cuz i know in the new, the trailer they show like what it used to look like and then what they did to it right or or was that a Yeah that's video? that's what they're doing and the weirdest yeah. thing about the beginning of the video was it was literally just a bunch of youtube comments trashing the old yeah it's preview it's of 2. it 2.5D stuff which is i mean it's it's kind of like hopefully the gameplay's good. It, if it well, it I it makes me it nervous. Like. The gameplay makes me nervous because the running and jumping seems f more floaty than it was in Symphony of the Night, and I could keep, I could be wrong. Uh, Alucard was pretty floaty. He has that sort of uh, what do you call it? That um, locomotion. Like, he's got that very, like, it has a lot of momentum he's to floaty. it. He's floaty. He's floaty. He is floaty. I'm just saying he's that, like, there floating, is. floating, I think, when he moves. I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I like that, like, what they're showing me a little bit here is, like, um, the FMV sequences are fucking, like, way. Like, they kind of change the style to, like, high contrast. Um. Higher contrast in like darker settings, like, and it feels like she kind of go comes out from the backgrounds better mm -hmm. than she did before. It just seems like less flat. Yeah. Um, which it looks great. June eighteenth is when we're uh, is yeah. when we're coming out it's with like it. A week um, later on Switch, which is probably where you buy it correct oh yeah there's no reason i'm not gonna buy it on the switch um so hopefully oh yeah it's like almost cell shaded now it's like it's 
I mean, it kind of looks cell shaded before. It just more now looks like the the texture of shit is like I don't know that what I'm saying is like in some of these levels they didn't just style up the level they literally took it and changed it completely like yeah when she's they, in the like they did a lot of work on the lighting crazy a lot the think, the scenery what, lighting not her yeah, yeah, lighting yeah. the scenery yeah 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 that's what I'm, like it's out of control how much they did the, like the background there's actual lighting in the background as opposed mm -hmm. to uh the backgrounds as, were always stacked but yeah but it, it, they, in the old old the older stuff it looks almost flat like they're flat yeah. images but they actually give lighting in the background of, this is from what why I see in this little square that I because I'm not watching a full screen. Yeah, it looks like things are lit in the background as opposed to a static image. Which is pro it's probably just a static image, just done better. But the uh, the first side by side in the trailer on the left hand side, it's the sh the old one, and then on the right hand side, it's the new one. This is the first one. Mm -hmm. Below the old one, it says poop. I'm I'm not kidding you. In this trailer, for the new version of the game, for the release date, the crappy side with the crappy graphics says poop, and the right-hand side says new. I'm saying this to you right now. It, that's what's happening. Um, I wonder when this game was done and they decided to redo it because they're because they delayed it so many times. So yeah, it's it's like uh, they don't like the art style, and since we already delayed it a hundred times, we can just delay it again and just kind of touch. Well, here's up. the here's the fun part. Like in the discussion below this article, the the first guy was like, "Why do I suspect the early artwork everybody complained about was never meant to be the final graphics, and we're just now seeing what was always intended?" And then the guy below that said, that's what I said on the other post. It just looks like an early build versus a finished game. Uh, because that's the truth, but they are just pandering to internet dummies. I don't know. Got... I mean, it's a Kickstarter game. People are people back. They're expecting the game. You know what I mean? So what, yeah. what could have been placeholder graphics, what would look like placeholder graphics, like they they're trying to put out this game as fast as they can because they have everyone that gave them money for it yeah hounding them all the time so of course they're gonna look like placeholder graphics because they are trying to make a game they're trying to make this game as quick as possible basically especially but, considering that it's it's not I'm they could make sure. the game quicker if it was just a, a a funding entity that just gave them a bunch of money a fucking million times, and they were just like, "Okay, here's yeah. all the money to make it like really quick." And I'm pretty sure they'd already delayed it like two years at this point. Oh yeah, it's been a fucking I'm eternity. Pretty sure it was supposed to come out in 2017. So eternity. I was so excited when I saw this, and then I was just like, I can't even believe that it's actually coming out next month. I'm just hoping that it's not going to be a mighty number no. nine type of situation where we just get a game that's complete trash and utter garbage. And it's like, oh, yeah. like just I don't know. I'm just not looking forward to that. Um, uh, all right. Next, what do you got for me? All right. So, look, we just talked about a game that possibly had its artistic vision compromised in theory. Now, let's talk about a movie Ooh, that may have possibility of, of having its design compromised sonic oh boy let's jump on this bandwagon so um <laughs> two weeks too late what's up yep hey, hey bandwagon come back bandwagon i i have to throw myself under you please um you know i feel like it's completely justified just based on the fact that we all knew that it was shit i think just when you know something is shit Mm -hmm. and you know that it is i don't think anybody has any right to say to somebody but that was our initial vision no it wasn't it's just the same thing that happens to me at my job i come up with something it's not good it gets by too many people and they say it's good they and they fine. blow smoke up my ass and then suddenly when everybody else is like, oh, this is garbage, then they're like, then people are crying like, 
oh, it's this is what they intended for the character. Everybody needs to sack up and fucking no. It may be what one person intended for this character, but it didn't go. It it, it clearly either got by too many people who don't give a fuck. Or it went by like nobody and they're just like, yep, this is, you know, it's good. Here, print it, cut, print, we're done. Or they built it to make it easiest to rig up all the animations. Mm -hmm. Two eyes. But here's the thing. Two eyes, like longer legs. Here's why I can maybe issue a rebuttal on that statement. Only because I can say that I watched Love, Death, and Robots, or whatever the fuck the name of that show is on Netflix, and boy, can some directors and animators make some fucking crazy shit with not a lot of uh, oversight or money. It's completely possible. People make fan films all the time that are fantastic so yeah. I would say probably in this case, but they have if you had have all the time that they need or want to take to make it, where this they have you. Paramount mm -hmm. saying we need down this movie next, out like we need to make some fucking money. Six months. We the just, weird thing is, is just done. The weird thing is though is that like if they were really trying to catch some sort of wave, what wave are they on? Where is it? Uh, What's the wave? We need money this quarter. I get that. <laughs> and I get wave. the nostalgia play, but I feel like this should correspond with something, and it doesn't. Detective Pikachu There's didn't correspond nothing. with anything. It just came out today, or <sighs> yesterday. I mean, a cult, I don't mean that a Sonic game came out yesterday, so now we got to make a Sonic movie. And Sonic games have been coming out for the last 20 years. I'm more saying that... The cultural zeitgeist that we're in right now always makes me think, do we give more of a fuck about Sonic than we do Pokemon? And and here's the and here's the answer. No. Well, because well, Niantic put out your problem. the number one fucking app of all time two years ago. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay, I got here it. we Ready? go. Da -na -na, da -na -na. The companies aren't asking, is Sonic viable? Mm -hmm. They are saying, video games are big. We need a video game movie. Okay. People like video games. I got you. What's a big character? Sonic. Like you said, they've been putting games out for 20 years. Everyone knows who the fuck Sonic is. What's so surprising to me Car about that facet alone, though... Is I get it, you know, look at, hey, can we get up a list of the top 10 video game properties of all time? What's going to be next? Crash Bandicoot movie. Okay, great, yeah. whatever. So we, we take a look at that, right? But then the problem becomes, like, what, what is the, what is the risk that something like Paramount is taking when they know that nine times out of ten, video game movies in the it, across every era fail miserably. <clears throat> Ooh, I got the answer to this one too. <clears throat> Hit him. Give Fuzz, it to him. Fuzzy character. Kids want to go see it, so they make their parents go and see it. Then they go out and they buy all the toys. Perfect. Merchandising. I got you. Are you on the board of Paramount? Maybe, possibly. Is that uh, where this is coming from? Let me just shove all this money I back right back into my pockets. Yeah, whoops. Sorry, it's <laughs> leaking out again. Line in my pockets for standing up for him. <laughs> Big Paramount. I get I it. Then. I don't know. If you I do this, understand but it. I did the the logo treatment in the beginning where the coins go around the Paramount logo instead of the stars. <laughs> ding, 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 that ding, was me. <laughs> oh, that's gonna that's gonna kill. For us, we know that's you got to make a good first impression, and that's how you do it. The old rings around the mountain. Um, okay, so now you've schooled me on American pop culture, so let's move on to Pokemon related. Yo, did you see that it trailer? Uh, no, not yet. It's a good trailer. 
to the trailer spooky you know you know a horror like a good horror movie trailer when did you see the first movie no oh i saw the old it which i hated i really like the new one i have it on 4k just saying (laughs) okay cool i really like if you get a chance to watch it you should watch it also i didn't know bill Hader was in this this one because yeah he plays the adult yeah part two is all the adult yeah and i like i didn't know he was for some reason it looks good you know what else looks good uh me in skin tight jeans give them (laughs) give them to them give them everything uh adidas is making pokemon sneakers Mm. adidas is making pokemon sneakers i heard you well what kind of sneakers are they uh adidas campuses they're like the uh they're like their vans the real like uh casual flats the 3m or 3b i have i have the beavis and butthead ones uh it's the they're they're like um shit i can just look them up adidas campus um 3mc i don't know i don't know what that because the 3MC is the, like the low top van style. This one has the three stripes on it, and it also it looks like it's leather designed, but they're just lower. They're like Adidas low, um, with kind of a larger tongue, somewhat. Um. Oh yeah, those are just the regular ones. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're like the you know the. No, they're not even like they have actual like there's ones that are more like vans. Oh, okay. I was just saying these are more like vans because they they don't follow oh, the same those like are prime knit. Sick. What? These Adidas's. Are you still talking about the Pokemon ones? Yes. And then there's the Squirtle ones that they just did. Did you see those ones? Yes. Squirtle's my boy. <laughs> um. Yo. Yeah, let's see. The release date for these no is going to information. Let me see if they actually have it on this website. That was as um as boy. Oh yeah, there's yeah, there isn't still there's still no release information. Wow. But anyways, I gotta get those Squirtle ones. Mm-hmm. And then they also had a pair of Pikachu Air Jordans uh, at the beginning of the month here. Somebody did some customs on this. Yeah, you can custom, you can custom shit all the time. Yeah. Uh, squirrel ones, damn. Hi. Hey. Good. Are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I'll wrap it up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, Dylan. Um. So, my last piece of video game news uh is the well we'll we'll do this and then we'll end it dylan we'll end it on a high note the riot walkout that's yeah that's a high note baby (laughs) yeah forced arbitration sexist cultures around video games has it happened for as long as we can think and is this just the first time that anybody's saying anything about it? Yes. Or all right. Okay. <laughs> you said yes, all yeah. right. No. Also. Um I don't feel I'm like gonna... I don't feel like a two minute hot take on this topic is you don't feel like a two minute hot take on it? On this incredibly nuanced and <laughs> yeah. uh, completely all right. We'll keep it we'll keep it light. All right, let's end it on a high note. <laughs> like you're just going through the video game. News. I'm just going through video game news, Dylan. That's all, right, all I got. That's all I'll I have. A, a required watching. A required watch. Okay. This is what I haven't finished it yet, but I mm-hmm. already know it's very well produced and it's going to be a great thing. This is what you uh, ruined my what i was doing before we started recording this mm, mm-hmm. uh playstation posted on their youtube channel a two-hour documentary about the making of god of war the new one mm. 
Okay. And right required now, viewing. It required viewing. As of right now, it's aces. I have really some required viewing for you as I also, well. I don't think there's too much spoiler. I don't know what the spoiler situation is, but you, the game has been twenty three dollars. I at still want to play the game. I it. just don't. I don't know. I, I again, you know, I have problems. We'll discuss those at a later date. Maybe I'll have some actual I, video games know. that I played. <laughs> Oh, I, they know about those ones, but I'm saying the video game playing thing, you know, it's it's tough sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, uh, require viewing for you, One Punch Man. Okay. Knock it out in a few hours. It's a, it is a stupendous. The problem is, I don't know how you feel about dubbing versus subbing. Um I, don't I care either I, way. I almost kind of felt like I really wanted to see what the subbed one is. I was watching it, or I was I was watching it subbed, and I kind of want to see what the dubbed one is. I don't know. I always watched animes dubbed. I w- I'm not a weeb. Yeah. Like I I don't watch it with the original intention. I like I don't need to be reading. I want to see the. I would well, like to do that as well, especially yeah. in a show that has as frenetic and frantic of action as this has. Mm-hmm. Um. I kind of am considering maybe just seeing if I can maybe just get myself a quick subscription to Verve or Crunchyroll or some shit or Hulu or something. Anyway, um, it's a great character. Saitama is like a guy that I could relate to because he basically has horrific depression because he can kill anything in one punch and he wanted to be a superhero and it doesn't really pan out for him in terms of fruitful endeavors. He never has a an enemy that that can really match him. And he goes home every day just being like, oh, what, what's my life about if I can just kill everything in one punch? And uh, he's like a very like ineffectual, very like um, kind of comically, comically blase type of character. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a worthwhile watch. Right. It's part of my anime 2019 docket, so hopefully we'll get to watch some more animes and critique some more animes on next week's episode. Okay. Episode. I got to go look at some art. Have drink fun. Some beer. Have fun. Go set up. I'm signing off for now. If you want the audio versions of this podcast, our newly rebranded podcast to be back on brand, back with the quips, back with the funny jokes, back with the anecdotes check it down below and you can get that shit put into your eardrums if you choose this has been another episode of the jacket off podcast i'm brent i'm back na 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 i'm out